Hey everybody, I just thought of some new tutorials I can do. Tonight I'm going to do something that's hopefully helpful to everyone, and that is some basic site modeling tips, tricks, tools, etc. I'm going to start out with a really basic site. Let me just go to the top view here. I'll turn off my grid. And I'll just start with a rectangle. I'm not going to worry too much about scale because it's just an example. Whoa, video card. Okay. Um, then we'll just convert that to edit poly. And let's see, we will select those edges and connect them a bunch of times. Just making it into a. Actually, wait, let's do this. We'll just hold down shift and create some new polygons this way. And we'll just grab this. Uh, usually when I'm doing sites, I'll have a specific topology that I'm trying to match. So I don't actually build them like this. But if you're just building a generic site, this works. I wish my display would work a little better. So anyway, that site's going to have a little hill on it. It's going to look something like that. And that's just dragging edges while holding down shift to create new polygons. Okay, so that's a really steep site. We'll grab some of these points over here and maybe push them down. Make it slope in two directions. And maybe we'll put a turbo smooth. Okay, something like that is fine. So this is this is potentially the kind of site you could have on generic project. Um, now the trick is getting if you have streets, sidewalks, curbs, etc. Trying to get in here, how do you do it? Uh, that's what I'm going to show you. So you, the important thing is the spline tools. Um, we'll pretend like we're making a sidewalk first hold down shift to make some straight lines we'll close the spline go into the vertices we'll uh, convert them all to corners and then we will um, put a fillet on them something like that say that's a sidewalk or we'll say that's a pad for a building to sit on now what we can do is take that outline it some make sure that you don't outline it so much that these corners start getting crazy and if they do, you'll have to go in and manually weld them. That looks all right. And then we'll detach that outer line. By just hitting that, make its own shape. And all this is really doing is um, creating construction lines for us. Um, so, as you might have noticed, we're drawing these all flat, and it actually doesn't even matter what plane they're in, in the Z, in the Z plane, Z axis, they're just flat, and those would represent where our sidewalks, um, this square I, draw, this I drew is going to be the asphalt. Um, so now I'll show you what we do with that. And this topography is obviously going to be totally exaggerated but it'll show you in fact let me, let me make that a little flatter so we can actually put a nice driveway onto this okay now the important tool here once you have our construction line splines basically um, 
and by the way it's important to with the next step I'm going to show you it's important that you're using splines and not rectangles converted to splines I'm not sure why that is but sometimes that makes it mess up but the tool we're going to use is in um, the create panel create geometry instead of standard primitives we'll go to compound objects and shape merge um, okay let me go back a little bit first we want to convert this to edit mesh and we will select it go into compound objects objects shape merge pick our first shape we'll select this um, this rectangle I drew and we want to make sure that let's see actually we want to if I was doing it right I would have had this selected and I'll show you what that does um, okay now if I go in here and convert this back now to an edit poly or an edit mesh it doesn't matter it's actually going to be cut right where I drew that line so if I select here now huh, didn't work actually let's see here let me see if I can figure this out okay I'm not sure what happened before but I've got it to work now like I said with shape merge it matters very much how the these construction lines were constructed I'm not sure what I did wrong on that other one but it didn't didn't like it for some reason anyway I'm back I'm back before I did the shape merge um, so this is just an edit mesh go into compa compound objects shape merge go to um, object sub mesh selection put it on face and then just pick the shape that you want to merge and you can see that cut it just did right there so it's going along that line projecting it onto that topography now if I convert this back to an edit mesh or an edit poly and then go into face mode because of that selection I did with the sub sub mesh selection it's gonna select the faces I just cut out and with that I will now detach that and what I would usually do in this case is say I wanted this plane to be my grass and this to be my parking lot I'd move this down six inches in the z-axis So just type in negative six um, because this is not the right scale it's gonna be wrong obviously but you want that at a set number so that you know exactly how much lower that's gonna be so you can place your cars properly and all those kind of things so now what we'll do is um, cut out the pad for our building here using the exact same process so now we'll take we actually don't need this line anymore sometimes I save it on a scraps layer and then make that ren that layer not renderable or just hide it in case I need to come back to it later one hard thing about modeling like this is it's uh, sorta of hard to go backwards um, so when possible I like to leave my sites flat and just use these splines and just extrude them and or turn them into flat polys but when you have topography like this in there that doesn't work okay so using that same method we'll just go in and do the exact same thing again um, compound object shape merge make sure this is selected we'll go in and pick a shape pick that outer one first and you can see it projected right onto there convert this back again Did, um, let's see detach then we can uh, move that plane up a little bit in the z-axis um, and now uh, let's cut out that third shape same thing again 
Not sure if this works when it's in Edit Poly, but we're about to find out. It does. Okay, good. So it works with an Edit Mesh or an Edit Poly. And I okay, I did select. Or it did remain selected. Okay. Now I'll just attach that again. And there you go. Um, so this could be... I don't know. This doesn't really make a lot of sense, but hopefully it shows you the tools you need. Oh, I don't have my V-Ray dongle with me, so it's going to freak out. I won't mess with the materials, but um, as an example, this could be a lawn. This could be a sidewalk. This could be another lawn. Um, and then this could be your... Uh, your parking lot area. So I want to talk about a few other things that you might need. Um, one is obviously the sweep tool. If you're familiar with that, what I usually do is just make a profile that looks something like a section cut of a curb. Maybe something like this. And then remember I told you it's important to know how far below your your uh, your parking lot is from your sidewalks I usually put it at six inches and that way you know exactly how tall this profile should be from here to there since I didn't draw anything at scale I'm out of luck there but in a real world real world example that's what I would do so you can make a little spline like that and then the nice thing is that we can actually just go in here, go to our top view, and for example we can take, we can go into border mode, border sub-object mode of our edit poly, and we can just select that border right there, and right click and go to create shape. Make it linear, so it'll hug each one of those vertices perfectly, and that just created the spline that we need for our sweep path for that curb. So now we can take that that line. If you hit Shift O, you'll you'll see the line right there. Oh wait, no, nope, that's our construction line. It's this line, and you'll see the profile we made. And we can go to my sweep modifier is right here. Yours might be in the modify panel under sweep. Um, use custom. Pick the shape we made turn our objects back on so you can see it shift O um, and now you just mess with the parameters of your curb to make it fit that's not right um, anyway my size is a little bit off so I'm having to fake it a little bit but anyway now you've made a curb that follows your topography perfectly and you can do the same thing for this line back here then you've got a nice curb, a nice pad for a building to sit on, etc., etc. Okay. Um, so those are the those are the basic tools. Those are the basic modifiers that you need. Um, obviously, this is a very simple example, but um, but that is the process you go through. If you want to do parking lines. Um, if you've got parking stripes all along here, an easy way to do that is, um, well, I don't know if it's easy or not, but you could just draw it in 2D using the methods I'm doing right now. Just draw a line, take the segment, copy it, you know, lay out your curbs, or you might be able to even get some of the, or your uh, parking stripes. You might be able to get some of that from AutoCAD as well and just convert it to editable splines and um, now one plugin that I'd like to make you aware of that makes this uh, pretty easy is the glue plugin. Let me find the web page for that. Okay, here's the glue utility. It's on i2soft.com, i i2 software. And you can see right here what it does. It takes a spline and it glues it onto terrain right there so if you draw those parking stripes that I was working on and then what you would do I don't have it loaded here but you would go into utilities um, it's usually in more and it'll come up in here as glue and you'll hit it 
very few parameters and it'll just glue right down onto that surface. So that's an easy way to do parking stripes. And by the way, it also works for things like uh, proxies. You can take your cars and glue them to the topography. You still have to rotate them to, to get on there right. You can take all your plants and glue them onto your grass surfaces. And it works by the pivot point of those. So you just have to make sure your pivots are in the right place and glue them onto the surface. So that's a good one to have when working with these kind of sites. And another one that's very useful is multi-scatter. And that will be useful because when you have this kind of topography going on, sometimes it's hard to place all your plants, even with the glue command. Um, multi-scatter makes that very easy because you just input the plants to the multi-scatter object, select, say, this piece of grass, or dirt, whatever, planting area, and it will just automatically scatter plants all around there and randomly rotate it, do all those things, place, it'll basically populate that whole thing uh, for you pretty much instantly. So that's another, especially if you're doing large sites, large aerial shots, multi-scatter is a must-have. But anyway, that's about it. Those are the essential tools for making sites on on uh, kind of organic shaped topography. Like I said, if it's a flat site, then it's quite a bit easier. You just have to worry about making the the right splines. But if you've got a slope to your site to your site, then um, these tools hopefully will help you out. Thanks a lot.